This video gives a number of examples of sketching root loci using the five basic rules. So what we're doing here is we're focusing on this second step. How do I compute and sketch root loci? And this video is going to do this using a number of case studies using the five basic rules that we derived in the previous few videos. Just a reminder of the background we're using, simple feedback loops of this form, expressing G and M in the form KN over D, so separating the dynamic part from the scalar gain K. And the closed loop poles are defined from either this relationship or this relationship here. And the previous video showed <coughs> how we could solve those and get inferences from them. And in this video, we'll give a number of examples. So the rule summary is rule one, mark all the open loop zeros with a cross. Rule two, mark open loop zeros with a circle. Rule three, compute the asymptote directions based on the excess of poles over zeros. Rule four, compute the asymptote centroid. And once you've got that, you can actually put the asymptotes on the plot. And rule five, add the parts of the loci which are on the real axis. And once you've done all of those, you simply join what you've got with smooth curves. Now you'll see this little note at the bottom. We haven't covered breakaway points and angles of arrival and departure because they are numerically tedious. And if you really need that, use a computer. And you'll also see this note, which has just appeared. The loci always depart the real axis at a 90 degree angle. Um, so make sure you do that. Here's the examples then. You'll notice I've put down six examples. A bit of a hint here in case you can't factorize them yourself. So now is the time to pause if you want to try them yourself, but I'm going to go through the solutions one at a time. First example then. You'll see we've got g equals 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 2. And you'll notice I've put on the left all the rules. So the first rule, mark the open loop poles with a cross. Now in this case, the poles are clearly at minus one plus or minus j root two. So what we've got to do is find out where that is on our axis. And that's going to be about here and here. And you'll notice, mark them with a cross. Next one. Mark the open loop zeros with a circle. There are no open loop zeros, so I don't need to mark them. Rule three, compute the asymptote directions. Well, the excess of poles over zeros, if you like, we'll call it k minus m, is two. So we're gonna get plus or minus 90 degrees for the asymptote directions. Next, do the centroid. Well, I'll do that up here where there's a bit more space. So the centroid, comes from the sum of the open loop poles, which is going to be minus two, minus the sum of the open loop zeros, which is zero, divided by k minus m, which is two, and that gives you minus one. So the asymptotes are going to be along these lines here. And then finally, at the parts of the loci on the real axis, well, you're looking here for odd numbers to the right and that's none of the real axis has an odd number to the right. Now in this particular case you can probably guess that the loci will actually follow the asymptotes. This is a rather unusual case um, that the loci lie on the asymptotes. Next example. g equals 1 over s plus 1, s plus 3, s plus 5 and uh, compensated just k. So first mark the open loop poles with a cross. So we've got one at minus one, one at minus three, and one at minus five. Next, mark the open loop zeros with a circle. No open loop zeros. Next, work out the difference between the number of poles and the numbers of zeros. So k minus m equals three, and therefore your asymptote directions are minus 180 and plus or minus 60 degrees. <laughs> compute the centroid. So we have the centroid, we get the sum of the open loop poles, which is minus one, minus three, 
minus 5, minus the sum of the open loop zeros, which is 0, divided by k minus m, which is 3. So you get minus 9 over 3, which is 3. So now I can mark my asymptotes using my 60-degree uh, angles. Now that's not it's not going to be immediately obvious because the scales aren't square, but the asymptotes are going to be something like that. You can be a bit more precise if you want, but I'm just trying to give an indication. So there's my asymptotes. Add the parts of the loci which are on the real axis. And you remember here, we're looking odd numbers to the right. So I've got an odd number to the right in here, and I've got an odd number to the right in here. So finally, what my loci must do is these two must come together and they go off and follow the asymptotes. And this one here goes that way. So there's my root loci. This one goes this way, this one goes this way, they join, join together and become complex, and the one on the far left stays on the real axis. Next example. So again, you'll see the transfer function at the top, so I'm going to mark the open loop poles straight in. I've got a pole at minus 1, a pole at minus 2, a pole at minus 4. I've got a 0 at minus 3. My excess of poles over zeros, I've got k minus m equals 2, so my asymptotes are at plus or minus 90 degrees. For my centroid, I've got to do sum of open loop poles, which is minus 1, minus 2, minus 4, and then subtract the sum of the open loop zeros, which is minus 3, divide by k minus m, which is 2. So you've got minus 7 plus 3, which is minus 4 over 2, and that's going to give you minus 2. So my asymptotes leave at minus 2. The asymptote directions are plus and minus 90, so there are my asymptotes. Next, add the parts of the loci on the real axis, and you'll remember I'm counting odd numbers to the right. So here I have 1 to the right, and in this bit I have 3 to the right. So there's the real bits on the loci. And so clearly, if I now complete, you'll see that this pole is going to this zero, because you remember some poles finish at the zero positions. These two poles clearly come together. At some point they join, and then they go off and join the loci. And you'll notice I've made sure that they leave the real axis at an angle of 90 degrees. Next example. <coughs> Again, I'll put the poles and zeros straight in as we have them. You'll see there's a pole at the origin. I've got two poles at minus one. Now, please make sure you mark two crosses, otherwise you can make silly mistakes. So there's two poles at minus one. I've put two crosses. There's also a zero at minus three. Next, excess of poles over zeros. I've got k minus m, in this case, is going to be two. So the asymptote directions, plus and minus 90 degrees. In order to do the centroid, I've got sum of open loop poles, which is going to be minus 1, minus 1. Then minus the sum of open loop zeros, which is minus 3, all divided by 2. And that's going to give me plus a half. So if I mark the asymptotes, they're going to go from plus a half, and they're at plus and minus two degrees. So there they are, with that red dashed line. Next, let's look where I've got an odd number to the right. So in here, I've got one to the right, and in here, I've got three to the right. And that's why it's important to put those two on minus one, so that you count correctly. And finally, let's look and see what happens. Well, poles go to zeros. So one pole is going that way. The other two poles must be coming together, joining, and then going off to the asymptotes like that. Example five. So you'll be used to this by now. So I'm going to go straight in and mark all the key points. So we have a pole at the origin, a pole at minus one, a pole at minus three, 
a pole at minus 5, a 0 at minus 4, and a 0 at minus a half. Next, compute the asymptote directions. Well, you'll see we've got four poles and two zeros, so k minus m is going to be 2, so I get plus or minus 90 degrees. Next, we need the centroid. So in this case, the centroid is going to be minus 1, minus 3, minus 5, and then minus, minus a half, minus 4, all divided by 2. And if you calculate this, you'll see you get minus 2.25. So I can now mark my asymptotes, and they will go there for minus 2.25 in this direction of plus or minus 90 degrees. Next, rule 5, I do odd numbers to the right. So there's an odd number to the right in there, odd number to the right in there, and an odd number to the right in there. And finally, mark some directions of what's going. That pole is going to that zero. These two poles are coming together, separating, and then going off that way. And this pole is going to that zero there. Final example then. So again, we'll do this relatively quickly. You'll see we've got a pole at the origin, a pole at minus 1, a pole at minus 3, a pole at minus 10. We've got a 0 at minus 2. So we've got four poles and one 0. So k minus m equals 3. So the asymptote directions are minus 180 and plus or minus 60. To get the centroid, we're going to do minus 10, minus 3, minus 1, minus, minus 2, all divided by 3, and that's going to give us minus 4. So the asymptotes have a centroid at minus 4. So now we need to put in this, um, these 60 degree directions. So you'll, you can be a bit more precise, but I'm doing this quickly so as not to save time. 60 degrees will be something like that on the scale we've got. And there's the third asymptote. Next, we add odd numbers to the right. So we've got an odd number to the right in there, odd number to the right in there, and an odd number to the right along here. And finally, let's mark exactly what's happening. So that pole is going off to minus infinity. That pole is going to that zero. These two poles come together, join, and then go off to the asymptotes. So next, what we should do quickly is say, can I check that I've done this right, that I haven't made any silly mistakes? So the normal advice is go and do it on MATLAB and see if you get the same answer. So we'll do that now very quickly. So you'll notice what we've got in here on MATLAB. Enter the transfer function. There's the first one. And then we can go down and we can do the root loci. There it is. And does that match the plot that we got before? Next, for example, two. Enter the transfer function. There's the statement. Now go down and do the root loci. Does that match the plot that we got before? And I'll let you check these yourself in slower time, obviously. The third example, there's the transfer function. And now do the root locus plot. Does that match what we derived before? Next example, number four, is that one? And then do the root locus plot. These extra lines, by the way, for the root locus plot are to make sure that the labels are nice and clear for you. And hopefully you're seeing that what, what MATLAB is showing is the same as we derived. Number five. There it is. And finally, number six. There we go. So in conclusions, we've given a number of worked examples of using five simple rules for sketching root loci. And the emphasis, you should note this, 
has been on sketch not plot. If you really want to plot then you're going to use our Locus or MATLAB or some other form of software. You are not going to do it by hand. And a reminder at the bottom as well we haven't included breakaway points which is where do the root lies I leave the real axis to go off towards the asymptotes or angles of arrival and departure when those are relevant because these are numerically tedious and in the modern era if you really want those, you're far better to use a computer because it takes too long to do on pen and paper.